degree of self-priority to her pursuit. She goes for what she wants, she goes for what she likes. And if you happen to be what she likes, you know, she will actively choose you to satisfy an experience and then move on to the next potential for self-stimulation. And to just, you know, potentially at the expense of your self-respect because it is more than likely that you will be one in a row of 20 other guys. See, diversity of experience is what fuels her. But don't worry, she loves you all the same, so. I'm talking about the real life baddies that I have met in person and witnessed the way they orient themselves in relation to men. And I've seen that the word no, that rejection in, in general, it just, it, it, it does not compute. <laughs> To the severity that they'll even do something like um, calling a guy gay or, or just finding some strange way to demean his manhood because she can't conceptualize that the guy she's interested in is, you know, allowed to not be interested. It's like they struggle to understand that guys need to be as discriminatory in their selections as we are. If anything, if he is discriminatory, it's a good thing because it shows the guy has standards. Hi everyone, <laughs> welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is Catherine and as per usual, I'm so grateful you could make it here or make it back from wherever it is on the internet that you came from. Today's introduction will not be too long. We're going to talk about baddies. We're going to do an analysis like we did with the Man of Pixies. We're going to talk about good girls who cuss and we're going to talk about celebrity wrestling culture and no, it is not as innocent as it sounds. As per usual, I make these inquiries to invite every form and savour of opinion when it comes to which vogues most severely affect our behaviour, what persuades us, but most importantly, what disturbs us. So, without further ado, let's begin. So, against my better judgement, I was once again on the internet looking for the latest disturbance on the online equilibrium of opinion, right? A piece that really only exists for the most part for two and a half seconds on a biannual basis. Anyway, as you can imagine, I did not have to look too long. I came across an opinion offered by actress Julia Roberts where she essentially just expressed why she refused throughout the entirety of her acting career to, to you know, strip down for the camera. Now, these sentiments were apparently so inflammatory that they spawned a number of articles that, yes, I was bothered enough to read for the sake of this video, but, but also a curiosity within me as to why people were so angry with what she had to say. And that is what I'm bringing to our discussion, our attention today. Now, not everyone, of course, was necessarily bothered, but it was the division of opinion that was of interest to me. Now, by that time, you guys, I had buried myself very deep into the online frustrations of what many might call Puritan culture. And after seeing a number of Twitter comments criticizing Miranda Cosgrove's notoriously memed, you know, good girl persona, I had to stop myself and ask myself the question that had been needling at the back of my mind. 50, maybe even 60 years ago, right? The number of sentiments disdained to sexually restrictive behavior on, yes, a professionally performative level, but also an immediate, you know, how many people do you go down on in a week kind of level were not as plentiful or even as passionate. So I had to ask myself, why is this the case? Now, it would be very remiss of me not to mention the effect of the sexual revolution, the birth control pill, just the number of contraceptive and or medical protections that mitigate against a lot of the long-term risk for indiscriminately frequent habitual sexual engagement. You get what I'm saying, right? Essentially, we've lowered the risk for promiscuity. And this goes especially for women, more so when we talk about pregnancy. And also, you know, let's not forget to mention a lot more abortive freedoms if all else fails and, and a higher chance of survival if someone contracts something like AIDS or any other SUV transmitted disease. You know what I'm talking about. It would also be remiss of me not to mention the active destigmatization of any and all forms of expression exploration even to the severity that you know explicit content is present in media commercialized to a younger and younger demographic you've heard of euphoria just more tv shows in general being produced that prioritize the maturation of an adolescent's conceptualization right when we look at the music we consume because you know obviously palatable rhythm softens the mind to suggestibility we see that not only is offered as a weapon against some assumption to control because a person's independence is very much affiliated with the active frequency and number of sexual partners they happen to have that communicates availability you're literally physically accessible to a greater number of people but that also means you can't be controlled you know so when we analyze the psychology of a baddie and why exactly she is equally aspired to desired and warned against it is my personal understanding that she is attractive for the same motivation that she is avoided Okay, because see, 
So this is my theory. An extreme independence speaks to the promise of adventure, right? Something that she will actually take the lead in whisking you through. But there is also a degree of self-priority to her pursuit. She goes for what she wants. She goes for what she likes. And if you happen to be what she likes, you know, she will actively choose you to satisfy an experience and then move on to the next potential for self-stimulation. Guys, there is a row of exes and thank you next behind her. She's very much praised for it. And it's not even like the girl isn't appreciative of the experience you give her. She very much is. And to just, you know, potentially at the expense of your self-respect because it is more than likely that you will be one in a row of 20 other guys. See, diversity of experience is what fuels her. But don't worry, she loves you all the same, so. Oh, but that's what makes her so fascinating, but also so addictive, because the baddie is an ideal both praised and warned against for the same recklessly independent feature. But the subject of my inquiry today, you know, the interest that I'm bringing to you is how does one actually lock a baddie down? Because, you know, they tend to be quite slippery. And also, how does one achieve this ideal should this ideal even be aspired to desired and speaking as someone who has been called a baddie approximately once in my 20 years of life i feel i have some serious authority on the subject i'm kidding but obviously i made this video for a reason there is a more serious and disturbing subject i want to bring to common discussion i want to picture yourself or just picture in general an upcoming starlet with incredible potential think along the lines of a seven-year-old sky jackson ariana grande maybe you're a k-pop idol a model an actress in the nascency of your career you don't quite have as of yet the secure industry connections of say a dicaprio or a naomi campbell but you do have ambition right and you do have a personality that can be commercialized i mean you have just got talent that if poured into on a monetary level strategically will see you through a lifetime of career successes of fame and people see it but you just need the right people to see it but the environment you find yourself in is so saturated because there are a thousand other talents looking for the same thing so what do you do well before you know you strain yourself too much on this question a solution comes knocking at your door say so, okay this is Com completely hypothetical. Your mother is aware of a certain open secret within the industry. She makes a few calls, she sends a few emails, and though she would never go as low so as to suggest you sell your body for certain SUL favors, she tells you that this kind of party, right, this kind of event, it's different. She tells you that this is an incredible opportunity. These big industry names, maybe it's a rapper, maybe it's an actor, whoever it is she's just been on the phone with, right? They see your talent, they see your potential, and they're open to investing in you. Oh, they like you. They're even willing to pull a few strings, right? They'll pay for your acting school. They'll actually, you know what? They'll even pay us as your family directly, your managers, so that we can invest the funds in your future where it is appropriate, where it is necessary. They tell you, sweetheart, we just need you to get on a boat, spend some time with his or her clients. Just, you know, try to maximize your time there because we will be getting around six figures per night. But yeah, just have fun. Don't think too much about it. And, you know, get used to it because this will be a thing we do. So you listen to your mom, you listen to your managers. May oh, maybe... Maybe it's got nothing to do with them. Maybe you did this out of your own volition. Either way, you know, by miracle, years later, you manage to solidify your name within the industry. You're an actress. You're part of a music group. Maybe you even marry a prince. I don't know. I, all, all hypothetical. And the irony is, and this is especially true of certain models and entertainers, that your celebrity presentation alludes to not merely your desirability, your freedom, your independence, your ability to be whoever you want, be with whoever you want, because now you're a bit of a, a glorified baddie. Your sex cannot be weaponized against you, certainly not the way it had been in the dark ages against women, because, well, your celebrity esteem protects you against a certain exploitation. If you're getting with lots of men, it's because you can. It's because you cultivate your own experiences, and it's because you want to. I'll even take it a step further and say that there is something suspiciously convenient about the sociological messaging integrated into whatever platform of influence you happen to dominate. You are the aspired to product of sexual freedom. A true baddie thriving in the lifestyle promoted by even the peripheral industries. No emotional or legal shackles to your independence. You're just living your life. Again, this is, guys, this is all completely hypothetical course um although i have provided some links in the description box below to celebrity yachting if you want to do your own independent research it's all very interesting to say the very least disingenuous some might say 
contemptible in my opinion when your entire brand and lifestyle is foundationed on a particular ideal that neglects to mention that your sexual exploits have been far from mere features of your sexual independence that such exploits actually paid your way into industry rankings that you are not the first victim of this open secret and you definitely will not be the last yet you're still selling this ideal on whatever commercial capacity selling this baddie ideal within your brand within your music that you got here you know purely by hard work to impressionable young consumers it's 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 very interesting when i asked said individual after long very exhaustive contemplation as to just wondering what it was about me that gave baddie energy considering it, it's not a secret that i'm not a woman of the streets i do prioritize my celibacy i don't even cuss i wouldn't say i necessarily dress overtly provocatively and i'm not concerned with anyone who does it's just not something you'll see me doing what i am trying to say is i've never been associated with that type of lifestyle and i just you know on a, on a personal level happen to know and relate to more women who live very quote-unquote superficially uninteresting day-to-day -day lives right these are women who don't really go out watch a lot of anime if it's not anime it's books if it's not books it's it's pro it's cooking if it's not cooking it's academics and if it's not academics it's pure procrastination <laughs> or even just gardening you know what i'm saying is you will not you won't, you won't find us at the club. That's just the way we prefer to live. Granted, it was the first and last time said individual ever offered that description to me as a compliment. The unique features I will describe for the sake of this video because there is clearly more than one way to be a baddie. But like I said, as you can probably tell, that compliment sustained my ego for a week and I'm, I'm still riding off that high. <laughs> so I will describe to you the complexion of a baddie that i do believe is to be aspired to i did mention this in a previous video but if you don't know this about me i'm very much against passive expectation when it comes to friendships relationships in general right the best things in life are often the things you want badly enough to put yourself at the risk of rejection for so if you like me but i think more especially if you are a woman who assumes a certain comfortability in being the one to instigate things i think it's as important to be as secure in your easter approach as you are every potential rejection that not can come but will come you will not be everyone's favorite i know i am not i've been told <laughs> that i am not and I'm okay not being everyone's favorite. In fact, I feel it better that way. But what I have noticed about real life baddies is that they are so used to being indiscriminately desired that they can't even conceptualize the word no. I'm not talking about media representations of the baddie. I'm not talking about the baddie in books. I'm not even talking about the baddie alluded to in music. I'm talking about the real life baddies that I have met in person and witnessed the way they orient themselves in relation to men and i've seen that the word no that rejection in in general it just it it, it does not compute <laughs> to the severity that they'll even do something like um calling a guy gay or or just finding some strange way to demean his manhood because she can't conceptualize that the guy she's interested in is you know allowed to not be interested it's like they struggle to understand that guys need to be as discriminatory in their selections as we are if anything if he is discriminatory it's a good thing because it shows the guy has standards don't be afraid to be direct and intentional about seeking out the ideals you know the guys and relationships you want because okay tell me if i'm wrong if the ideal you go for doesn't want you back then doesn't that then cease to be an ideal because ideally the ideal you want should see you as an ideal i maybe your ideal is you know someone who doesn't want you back i i i i don't know a true baddie knows what experiences they want they don't passively wait for them to drop into their laps and that yes promotes an independence but also a responsibility for the trajectory of one's life it obviates against a certain passive bitterness you know blaming everything and everyone you know from the patriarchy to the weather for not having what you feel entitled to and yes those factors definitely make things frustratingly near possible to achieve but let's not you know in our passiveness remove whatever volition and capacity we you know can pinpoint and realize we do have to select what we want in our interpersonal environments let's also be and i think this is quite important discriminatory and astute in the experiences we choose to invite our way because i think when you are aware of the weight certain decisions have the consequences of our intimate affiliations our relationships the 
really incautious, you know, reckless engagement for some illusory expression of freedom that very little people actually respect and care about will soon materialize as not very aspirational at all. But that's all I have for you guys today. I would love to know your thoughts. I would love to know your comments. I will see you next time.